Hi, right, good evening from my side, and we're looking at our next poem, or actually a series of poems, if you, depending on how you look at it. Tien Haikus for the Fredersfort Koepel. And an uh, interesting one, it's basically a selection of <coughs> little haikus, 10 to be exact, a complete number. So um, we're going to work our way through those. Um, not too difficult if you know the, the background of the poem. Um, so stick with me and we'll do this just like we did <clears throat> all the other poems. Uh, in the middle here I have a slash view of, uh, of the haikus. Obviously when I translate it to English uh, it's not in the form of a haiku anymore. Um, but uh, the, the meaning gets comes across so that's, that's all you need to know. Uh, let's just see if we are recording. Yes. Before we go on, remember to support our books, please. They are at CNA stores countrywide. If you're struggling with Afrikaans, if you want to squeeze out that A or get a B or just bump a symbol up or just pass Afrikaans, um, have a look at these books. They will. They have everything that you need. Go past CNA and get yourself a copy. Cool. So you'll see here that each... Um, Haiku has its own little title, okay? And before we actually get into the poem, let's just look at the, the, the background here, because if you don't understand the background, then the poem doesn't make sense at all. Um, so if you look at my first note here, <coughs> so the Fresh Fort Kupel, um, it's a it's a massive crater, essentially. I prefer the word dome. Crater sounds horrible, like there's, like there's nothing inside, but this is a massive dome. Um, it's from, if you can see it from space, uh, it's from about, from around about where Joburg is, right down to the Free State, uh, near uh, Fredersfort, Fredersfort, obviously. <coughs> and it's about 300 kilometers um, wide, if you see it from space. I'm sure your teacher would have showed you a, a, a satellite image of it or just google it there while you're there it's fascinating um it formed about 2023 uh, 2, million years ago not years million years ago million years geleden geform is dier a so it was formed by a massive meteorite about a, it's only well it's about a kilometer wide i thought it would have been bigger to make that big an impact but apparently a kilometer wide is pretty big <coughs> and it hit the earth at one at staggering speed in the so did the aarde getref na by of in die vrystaat na by vrede fort okay dit was die grootste meteoriet nog ooit it's the biggest meteorite ever um, that has ever hit the earth and it hit South Africa just our luck fortunately there was no one around back then um, and it was twice the size of the one that that uh, caused the extinction the eight staff of the dinosaurs okay so it, it caused the that was that was about 65 million years ago apparently um, so this one was way, way, way before that. Okay, and then life came back and then it got whacked again by another uh, meteorite. Did uh, it alle lewe in daar die aarde uitgewis? It, it, um, uitwis is d destroyed. It obliterated all life in that area and most of Earth, apparently. Um, it pos it's possible... I uh, read that it could have it knocked the earth into an ice age. So it called the order and an ice that date back in Gisland. What would happen is that it would um, send up so much dust that it blocks the sun and then all the plants die. And when all the plants die, the animals also die. And it, ch it changes into sort of an ice age. Um, one thing said that it could have even knocked the earth, the tilt that slight tilt of the earth out of sync so I don't know I don't didn't do geography but that's that's enough background that you need to know 
Okay, so this guy takes us through the phases here of the this 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 dome. Okay, from when it was formed by a meteorite right down to when it was declared a world heritage site to where people are have religion and they're praying up to the right up to the end when there's another destruction that happens um, and quite a few things here are quite open to interpretation so if you have your own ideas here and you can formulate them well and back them up from the poem <coughs> they can't, you can't really go wrong here so I just sort of put down a few loose ideas uh, your teacher might state it slightly differently and that's perfectly fine um, just add to your notes um, if you can and also if you have your own ideas here okay so I might miss out a few things or you might see things differently um, that, that is that is poetry so that's the beauty of poetry so let's get into it so the first haiku uh, let's just do the translations now and then we'll go on to the rest of the notes because we've got the background so dear the donker through the dark cliff is a lovely word it means to to split okay a cliff face in club leave a the order eight so through the dark a, a rock fist splits the earth and club is slaps um, rather than hit let's change hits to slaps and slap slaps the life from the earth okay so that's a great um, little haiku remember what a haiku is eh? it's uh, just to in case you didn't know it's a, that Japanese sort of form where they force you into three lines and if it's and then you actually <coughs> get crammed into syllables so the first line will have five syllables so dear d dong ker cliff five then seven a clip face in club leva seven and then and then five again eight d order eight perfect it fits if you've ever tried to write this is it's, it's very difficult but what it does do is you end up with a poem typically that has baie betekenis in min woorde it has a lot of meaning in very few words and it if you write your own poetry it helps you to to condense and cut out all the uh, carve out all the unnecessary um, syllables and words that you do not actually need okay so yeah we said that Alka haiku built a stadium funny kupal eight it each haiku um, built eight means and uh, to it signifies a different stage of the the, the life or career <laughs> almost of the of the dome okay so first of all the meteorite comes and knocks the um, splits open the earth yeah okay so we'll look at the alliteration and all that just now water so now water obviously now there's this big hole now the rivers and the streams are going to find a way to navigate or negotiate this new lay of the land so i could imagine that water would run into this big hole rivers and new dams would form and lakes and so on so it says there yay and the yay is the water i think you might think differently i think it's, i think it's the water yay marks so silver you make it silver without dry words you make sense okay so I, I just changed the word order than English so it makes sense to you um, you make sense so silver and without words okay without words sorry there's a T missing there what on earth is going on um, anyway 
can see there's a T missing there. Uh, what my skoon verstom it skoon is it completely astonishes me how the water can s uh, soften back and find make new streams and, and bring essentially bring new life into this dome because everything would have been dead with life comes water okay so that's the first or the second stage Grond, soil ground okay land maybe even fang rien and son so now the soil catches rain see fang is is, is um but first in the sentence there, alien blossing, ah, for op blossing, um, fang rain and sun. So this dome is catching rain and sun in the hollow hand of your body. Okay, this is a nice one. Of, this is my second favorite oh, ones of the haiku. <laughs> Haikus here. The next one is pretty cool. So in the in the hollow of your hand of your of your body you catch the rain and sun where life is beating like a heart where where life is beating rock hard okay so it gives you that sense of the 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 water the soil the rocks and in that it, it becomes like a living organism almost this massive 300 kilometer wide dome becomes like a, a hollow body that catches up life so there's going to ironically there's going to be more life in the dome after this than there were before because it just creates the ideal environment for life okay boom now things obviously start growing and seasons start changing okay so this is my favorite a uh, little haiku um, of the lot. Vierlig dwarrel herfs van kultakke los en broei nog a lente uit. Okay, so it's one long sentence. So vierlig is feather light. Um, dwarrel is when leaves like flutter. When aut autumn comes and the leaves die and they fall off the tree and they flutter down from coal branches, okay, coal tucker, and it breeds another spring, or another spring hatches. Okay, so autumn leaves flutter down from coal branches, and another spring hatches. So it shows the passing of time. Um, I'm just going to add that note there, actually, while I remember it. Uh, date. By our date, gone for bay. A tree needs time to grow. Seasons need time to pass. But we'll look at the note just now. Don't worry about it now. Means now fast forward quite a bit of time actually, um, a few million years, uh, and now we have people. Okay, two. Now this is from a religious sort of um, point of view. The cre suppose the creation idea of that people were created and that then did not develop or evolve. Okay, two, stan stof eight stof. Then dust came from dust. In where yes the order op grond van sy bestaan and where yes is rain or rules the earth on the grounds of its existence okay so from dust to dust so it, it sort of calls to mind the, the the genesis story that god created man from the dust and blew what is it blew uh, life into his, his nostrils that sort of idea there is a note on that so don't worry all right then we have vint okay so Trees, people, now wind. So it doesn't uh, really fit in so nicely to me. I'm not sure how the what the progression is to wind here. Yeah. Maybe you have an idea. Um, a awesome yach, a breath, 
chases over massive or icy. It can it can mean both, eh? Massive. So I'm just gonna put the icy, very cold nights, and wipes away our winter niche, our winter nest, our winter home, if you if you like. And this is a niche, eh? Um, or, or uh, like a cozy home, if it were. Okay, so maybe that's an ice age uh, after people came. Maybe the one that came with the with the dinosaurs. I don't I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how the wind one progresses from the previous ones. Um, I don't think they'll ask that though. Um, then it got declared a World Heritage Site, Wereld Erfenis. Okay, so that, that means that it's protected by law. This word beskerm dier dier die wet. I'm just going to put a note there. Erfenis, Erfenis gebied. Um, for later, uh, word beskerm dier die wet. So you can't just go and, and do whatever you want, like Lake St. Lucia or the Drakensberg. You can't just go and, it's all horrid, heritage sites, you can't just do whatever you want there, which makes sense. Okay, so, <laughs> ooh, this is a tough one. In ons koepel skier our crater, our dome, tears all langs die perforaties van menstorm middel dier. So it tears all along those little perforated holes of people. Um, difficult, difficult one. We'll talk about that later. Um, um, let's just take a note on mens and dom. There's a clever uh, word spell there, which we'll take a note on just now. All right. So the, the dome sort of tears man, humankind through the middle. Okay. Not sure how that's going to happen. Let's see. Besudeling. Now, um, <coughs> pollution is a massive problem in that area. Uh, today, it says no more deaf in deer and deaf, so animal and pigeon. Yes, they are horse from there, from the smoke. Uh, yes, for the rook and the root. Root is the smog, the, the soot from the fire. Um, for bail in track, sag boot. They must pay. They are fined. They are pay. They must pay under the destruction of axe and saws. Okay, so people obviously destroying nature. Dank gebed. Now there's a prayer. Year, Lord, God, uh, ons paie le uitgeteer oor brug met water onder deur. Our roads are tarred with bridges with water running underneath the bridges. Okay, that's a prayer of thanks. We have Thanksgiving. And then the last one. This is the interesting one, and it's open to uh, interpretation. Face van swal and fee. Now we don't have a, 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 a fist, a rock fist, a stone fist, like the, meet, that, like the meteorite uh, that, that punched the earth. Now we have a fist of sulfur and fire. Sounds familiar. Um, to me, we'll talk about that. Uh, and then this line is tough. Gaan diskant ons groot excuus weer kom asemal. So, on the other side of this fist of sulfur and fire, on the, and on the other side of our big um, excuse, 
our back. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to breathe again. Um, yeah, that is, that's, a, that's a difficult one. Let's take it step by step. Uh, cool. So let's just go on, yeah? Okay, so let's start off with... Oops, child waking up here. Um, let's go ahead and start with Mituri. So, Dear the Donker Cliff. Look at the alliteration here. That we... I'm just going to clean this up quickly for you. Um, sorry, there it is. Just clearer. Um... Dirty Donker Cliff. So you have a lo lovely K alliteration. And I, I would definitely go for this. So this is a bit of an easier question. Uh, there's the K, K, and K. I should rather not use purple. The um, K alliteratie wordt gebruik om die trefkracht van die meteoriet te beklemtoon. So the K alliteration is used to, to emphasize, beklemtoon, the punch, the power of this meteorite. The K is an explosive sound. Okay. It's a short explosive sound. So that's a, a very skillfully used um, alliteration of the K. Okay. Cliff, clip face, clap, lever, eighty order, eight, full stop. It ends there. You'll see that each um, haiku is a unit in itself because it ends in a full stop and it has its own its own title every time okay a clip face <laughs> we can ask what what's it's a stone fist it's personification yes that's a given but whose fist is this okay so already in the first haiku we can sort of start seeing some kind of religious godlike figure here involved here okay so um, whatever your personal belief I think you can't get away from it in this poem that there's some sort of um, God driven it's God driven some all powerful uh, being sent a meteorite to smash the earth it's a God-driven action. Or was it just some accident from space? Um, that's maybe a, also an idea. So two possible things. Maybe it's just a, a spatial sort of error, mistake. Or um, maybe it's God-driven. Okay, so whose fist is that? I would definitely ask that. Um, club lever eight. So all lever were finished. All life was destroyed. <coughs> there must have been some kind of animals and things there. Uh, definitely not people yet. Eh? Don't make that mistake. Two thousand and twenty-three million years ago. It's too. It's, even if you believe in evolution, it's far too early um, for for that. Uh, so it's not here, man, sir. Now we go on to water. Now there it's addressing the water. Yay. Yay maak so silver. Sonder droog woorde sin. You. So who is the yay? Well, it's, that's the question. That's the golden question there. That's the money question. Personificatie van die water. It's the, it's the personification of the water. And it's quite appropriate because water brings life. So to give the water human quality is pretty, it's pretty clever, I must admit. Um, die water doen meer as die droe woorde van die dichter. And he compares the, 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 the poet or the narrator in this instance compares the effects of the water on the effects of his dry words on paper. He says, all I can do is, do, is write dry words on paper. Water can actually bring about life okay 
En dat is wat het station note there. It says water bring lewe terug naar die twee koepel na die vernietiging. After the destruction there is life. Keep that in mind for the last haiku. After the destruction there is life. Because that idea comes up again. Okay. Then very cleverly um, look at the S alliteration. There's one, two, so many S's going there. So many S's here. One, two, three, four. Well, you've got, they've got to ask it. So you just say it, but claim to any flu for any water. It just emphasizes the flow of the water on the money you walk out with your marks. Um, okay, grond. Rien and sun. Okay, so rain and sun, is, life is coming back slowly after this massive thing hit the earth. Um, you back on from your life. Okay, so there the the whole dome is personified as having a body. It's like a it's like a body. Um so it's levende, so it's a levende life in effect. Right, very effective there. Um, can you see how much meaning gets packed into the 575 structure? Okay. Um, clip hard, klop. Clever um, play with words there. Again, the K alliteration, which indicates something hard. For a not eats what. Hard is. Oh, I did write a note on that. Kaliteratie wees hoe hard die aarde is. Okay. And it's difficult. Planten groei moeilijk. It's difficult for plants to grow there. Okay. And the heartbeat of this body. So this, die, die, uh, die, die klop is a, is a hard klop. Um, let's just put add that in case they ask that. Um, die klop. The implication is there, it's a, it's a hard loop. Because we already have the personification of this whole dome there with the life. So now it's just an extension of that. A body obviously has a has a heartbeat. Okay, so that makes entirely makes sense. Um, just moving it all down as we go along. Okay. Um, Boom. Where are we now? Boom. Yeah, my favorite one. Uh, no, so now we have progress. That's progressi. Um, it's just right there. Progressi. Just know that word because they might throw it into the question. Um, no three boom all all in the end do we grond. So trees are growing in the in the ground that used to be dead. Ash and lente, we have seasons. Seizoenen van groei gaan voorbij, baie tijd gaan voorbij, nieuwe leven na vernietiging. Again, there is that um, idea of new life after destruction. The cold takke, the cold branches, um, it gets very cold in the bottom, lowest parts of this, of that dome, obviously, in the free state, in the low, low-lying areas of the free state, you will freeze there. Okay. Staan stof uit stof. Now we have people. Um, sorry, I'm just going to move a bit up. We have meds. Yeah. Um, um, sorry, stof uit stof there. Um, so this is an intertextual reference to, to Genesis, the book of Genesis. The intertext van Genesis waar mens geskapen word uit stof. So where people were created, the first man, Adam, was created from the dust. Okay, that's how the story goes. Um, and there is evidence that early, early peoples lived and hunted and existed in this area. Okay, you can find their little tools and things that they made. 
vroeg mense het in die koepel gewoon gejaag en bestaan, they lived, they hunted, they existed in this koepel. Okay, from, they literally almost came from the dust, as the dust settled, um, in a literal sense, they came out of the dust. So there's a li literal and a figurative uh, meaning there. Um, letterlijk en figuurlijk. Cool. Uh, well, this is an interesting line. Um, another pun here, yeah, play with words. And we're here the order of grond van sy bestaan. Okay, so the p people, they reign the earth on the grounds of, it, of its existence. It has a literal and a figurative meaning here. Yeah. So literally, people live and farm, leef en boer, op die grond. That's something positive. But, also, figuratively, oor heers, omdat die mense die slimste dier is, so you also dominate. Oor heers is not a, oor heers is not a, typically a, 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 a word with positive connotations. So, just on the basis of them being people, they could dominate animals and dominate nature and destroy nature. So there is that double meaning there, that pun with words there. They'll definitely go for that, I can almost guarantee you. Okay, then the one that, I don't know how that fits in the wind. Now you go from trees to people to wind. Surely the wind must go come earlier. But again, it could refer to uh, this ice age that came later. So, yes, the dome would have been there when the ice age of the dinosaurs came. Okay, so, so moeilijke verwijsing na die ice state back, wat getref het na die meteoriet getref het. So, it's this ice age that hit, tref, after the meteorite hit. Uh, awesome, jaag oor ijslike nachte en vee ons winter nachte weg. Ons winter nis, sorry, weg. It wipes away. So this is the wind that comes and takes away the ice age so things can exist properly. Uh, ice also means big, big nights. I don't know how, why the, the nights would be big. Uh, maybe the view into the stars, I'm not sure. Maybe it was a big deal just to survive. I'm not too sure. You might have a, an idea there. Uh, die nachte, but it can also mean icy, okay, which would make sense, because die, ice, die nachte was baie koud, en een groot uitdaging, also a big challenge, so maybe in that sense it was big, so I did mention both there and the note, very cold and also a very big challenge. The, the awesome there, uh, awesome, so that's a personification of the wind, but who is the person that they are? personifying. Well, it could again be God or Mother Nature or something like that. A winter nis, that winter niche, is a plek waar die winter gemakkelijk was in floreer het. So, it's almost like the winter settled into the dome and made it like its home. And then this breath, this wind came, this godly wind or Mother Nature or something came and blew away the ice age. And since then, we haven't had an ice age. We haven't had one for 65 million years, apparently, depending on what you type into Google. Um, okay, so Wereld Erfenis, then it's because this area was so special and you could go and pick up pieces of meteorite there and just like build houses and stuff there, people start to control it uh, by law. Um, and then this interesting, uh, sorry, I missed it initially. Um, so this, these perforations where the dome is tearing the human kind of part, those perforations could just refer to the rocks. Okay, clipper, I think. Okay, but this main storm, this, this panya is a, is a good one, word spell. Um, so mens is person, dom is stupid, dumb, 
But mainstream together means mankind, humankind. <laughs> I don't know how Afrikaans works like that, but uh, yeah, it completely changes the. So obviously the poet saw that and separated it, and basically the the the, the narrator is saying is suggesting sugerir. Learn that word because it's nice to use in poetry. That demands dormus. People are stupid to let this place fall into to a bad state of, of, of pollution and so on. Okay. Dormus om ni. Let's just say it like this. Om ni di afrinus gebied. Ach, yes. So bloody dyslexic. Afrinus gebied op de Bosni. Okay, so the narrator suggests that the people are stupid not to look after this uh, heritage site. Um, Perforaties, clipper, right, means a scale. Okay, um, rocks that separate people, separated tribes back then, made sort of natural boundaries and so on. Uh, not too clear on that one. You may have a better better understanding, I hope. Okay, no, Basudling, um, this is an easy one, easy line. Uh, remember, they can't ask everything, so they'll pick the, the ones that, firstly, they understand clearly, and secondly, the ones that aren't too debatable. Uh, or too vague in terms of the meaning so because they have to mark it eh? and trust me they don't want arguments when they're marking poetry you just want to get through it okay um no mudir in daif there's a de alliteration that i don't think really means anything in this case yes funny rook in in root horse at these animals can't breathe okay um, there's obviously like our factories and, 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 and things there in the area must be um, in such a big area. Bale, very, that's like from long ago, people would just chop trees, drag uh, they would pay for it. Okay, so this area is paying, and that, that makes sense. That's why it's a World Heritage shop. I would have put this one ahead of this one, and I would have put Vint somewhere sooner as well um, anyway but it's the boat can do whatever you want so it doesn't matter uh, cool almost done then there's a dunk Oof, it's a long long video sorry then there's a dunk gebed a, a prayer of thanks um, tricky wow what 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 is the thanks about seems like the thanks is about modern developments um which in the, in this area i'm not sure and there is no tier there are there are now tall roads river uh, bridges over rivers modern um modern developments on vickelings this positive moderne means in a different balance modern people and nature find a balance maybe that's what the thank you is about that's what i guessed that there's now a balance between people and nature but this balance is disturbed in the last the last haiku um, so there's progression from the previous one there here's all this um all this pollution and now there's a prayer of thanks about the tarred roads um with water running underneath <coughs> you to walk through rivers and things Uitgeteer could also mean um, very skinny and drained. Um, again, a bit of play on words there, but I don't think it means anything there. Yeah, I hope I'm right. <coughs> anyway, let's finish off with the last one. So, team. Tien is a, it's a volmaakte getal, it's a, it's a perfect number, it's also a sim symbol of the end. So what are we talking about here? Well, it could be some sort of end of the world, sort of some sort of Armageddon type of scenario, yeah. Um, 
with its fear and swollen fear sounds like something from the book of Revelation where people get wiped out. Um, so, so God's dienstige toon van klimak. So the, what I said here is that the religious tone finds its climax here. Remember it started in the first one already. Uh, we, are, we said whose fist is this? Okay, so there already we could guess yeah, there's something religious here. Okay. Face van swal in fear. This fist of no, it's not a rock fist, it's a fist of, of, of sulfur and fire. It's a verwijzen naar aardse vernietiging in openbaring dier God. So it's a reference to earthly destruction or the people of the earth in the uh, openbaring is revelation, the last book in the Bible. Okay, where it's a you know, it's a different, you know, it's a, a book full of symbols of destruction. Na die vernietiging van die mens sal die lewe in die koepel weer aan. So after, remember we had this idea um, that there will be life again. And there it is. Weer kom asemal. There will be, someone will breathe again. God as rechtmaker van mense probleme. So this, die groot excuse, you see there, it's written with capitals. So there's some sort of divine personification there. Is there's a divine personage there. Is it a God figure? Well, probably. I think you would be safe if you said that. I can't see what else. Die wat die aarde vernietig sal self vernietig word. Remember the the warning in the, in the Bible is that those destroying the earth will be destroyed by God. Okay, so, you heard excuse, um, the big fixer of problems, the, remember now, the, the, the pollution and the problems that there are in this area can only be fixed again by another, sort of, just what, like it was created by a meteorite. Maybe now it can be fixed by um, sulfur and and fire. So I'm just going to add that geskip dier meteorite um, herstel dier um, swal en vier question mark. So it was created by a meteorite, but it was fixed by, um, by sulfur and fire. So the big, you heard the excuse, <coughs> the, the big, um, I'm sorry, the big um, sort of mistake, the fixer of mistakes. Um heard excuse. The God Goed vergeer wat foute recht maak. Something like that. I'm pretty sure if you say that, it'll be fine if they ask something about the groot excuse there. Which will be a very tricky, unfair question, I think. Anyway, that was a long, a long discussion. Um, please remember to support our books, Afrikaans Made Simple. And they're available countrywide at CNA. Um, I hope you're making good progress with the poems and um, we'll chat again soon and we'll try, I'll try and make a video on every single poem that there is. Okay, cheers.